Happy time of day, folks. Good morning, Grobe. How are you doing, Mr. Randall? You know, I got up early, so. Getting um, those worms, huh? Yep. <laughs> exactly. No, I told Fuzzy, I was like, you have to have the presentation today. Because if you don't have it, I'm going to fly to Scotland and slap you. Oh, man. It's a hell of well, a drive. Well, you, you know, it's one of those things that I like when I give instructions. Like, I specifically made it so that it all wouldn't fall back on one person. And guess what happened? Everyone went back and reassigned it all to Fuzzy. So now it all falls back on one person. And then I'm like, bro, why'd you accept? And he's like, I can do it. I can do it. I'm like, you're going to pull off two presentations in eight hours. We'll see what happens. Har. <laughs> I was like, do you realize you created a single point of failure? And he's like, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a good time at SKF. We're all bros, you know, but good. But yeah. I need to have these presentations for today, for later, so yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, my day job uh, commands that I have something to do. No, no worries. Time. And for the record, at some point in the education sig, we might want to sit down and look at it. Um, what we're doing is we're getting all of Glenn's presentations, which are uh, currently about 70, 80 presentations, and we're completely revamping them, so yeah. Well, we have the opportunity to meet as education SIG in 24 hours. Yep. Super exciting. I know, right? Man, it's a very open source day tomorrow. Education, source code management guide, and then VEX. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want that one. I've been waiting for that one because I really want to use it on the cert system. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any additional people uh, clamoring to get in. So let's uh, get started, gents. Uh, if you have any opens, add them onto the agenda. Ooh, art's here. Art is here. The best hair in security. <laughs> Oh, that didn't even lure him out. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> it's like nine o'clock. Uh, oh, yeah, you guys are East Coast. Right. So uh, as a reminder to you two, uh, we are holding uh, TAC elections. In order to vote in the TAC election, you need to uh, fill out a brief survey. So far, out of the whole foundation, you want to guess how many people have registered to vote? Well, I registered, so at least one person did. <laughs> 32. That's surprisingly, isn't there like three or 400 people at the minimum? Right. Uh, there's like many, multiple hundred attached to the Slack channel. And yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Spread the word, have folks, if they want to participate in voting, either for the TAC or for the uh, community individual representative, please fill out that short form. And if either of you are interested in running for the TAC, there is a uh, nomination process for that. That's a little bit longer than 30 seconds. You'll need to have like a little speech, uh, you know, what I wanna do on the TAC to make things better. But that is another option. It, it, I, quick question. I don't know if you have like a quick answer, but is that a lot of work and a lot of responsibility to be on the tack? Yeah, um, it is a I feel a lot of responsibility. Uh, it is not a ton of extra work. I would say like an hour or two a week at okay. most. So not too, too much. Uh, is the voting form easy to find? Well, if you look at the agenda art, there's a link right to it. 
so you register and then they will send you a mail with the uh, they're using some kind of tool for the uh, actual voting for what it's worth um I, I was so something I was interested in, but we then we kind of as a team agreed that it would just be better for me to show up to TAC meetings because my superiors feel like it would be too much responsibility, and too much work. And it's like, but someone has to do it. And yeah. Things aren't going to get better if we don't have people showing up and. Well, I told them that the someone has to water. bridge LF and open SSF better. Mm -hmm. And Tim told me that I'm more than welcome to do it. He just doesn't, I mean, doesn't mind me being on the TAC, but would recommend me, let's try this for a year and then we'll regroup next year and see about it. So we'll see. Well, everyone's welcome to uh, show up to the TAC and express your opinion as we have our conversations. Um, so it, it, when you get to a computer art, or even if you can look at the agenda on your phone, there, there is a link to a Google form. The voter registration is like 30 seconds. You have to put your GitHub ID in basically. Uh, the self-nomination for either the individual representative or the TAC is a little longer, a couple minutes. Can you explain what the individual representative is a little bit better? Um, so the security community individual representative is a person that is not necessarily affiliated, is not affiliated with a governing board company. Uh, so right now the representative is Ian Coldwater and they help speak on behalf of maintainers and upstream. So that's, that's kind of the perspective we want to have in the room as often as possible. Fair. Okay. And uh, that job is a little more work because you actually have to go to governing board meetings and stuff and TAC meetings. Well, I don't think I'm allowed because I'm on a LF, right? So Right, well, you're not I'm... an independent uh, representative. Well, so yeah. like back in days of yore, uh, that could have been something that Jonathan might have been able to do because he was a security researcher kind of out there in the wild. Oh, Jonathan's here. But now Jonathan's also an employee, so he is no longer an independent representative, so... I have been asked not, or I have been suggested not to run for the TAC. It, it really? Is, you too? It has been suggested to me not to run for the TAC. That's what they suggested to me too. I, I, they told me that I maybe after the first year in LF, maybe. We'll I see. also, let me put it this way. I also have no interest in the bureaucracy. Oh, there was no, never really a risk of me running for the TAC. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Speaking of the TAC. Um, any questions about the election? No, I'm good. Uh, speaking about the TAC, I have some news about the uh, open source CERT mobilization plan proposal. Good news? Uh, I have news. <laughs> so it received a overwhelming four out of seven TAC members uh, endorsement that this was a good idea and should be brought up to the governing board for review for funding. So it has done such, and I am currently in conversations with um, the LF and OpenSSF people on uh, what else we need to prepare for that presentation. So at some point in the very near future, uh, we'll probably need to make like a two or three slide deck to kind of TLDR the plan and show like the numbers and timelines and stuff. I can volunteer for that. And then, um, but once I get a template, I'll be glad to uh, delegate that. Uh, and then we'll need to present to the governing board. And if they feel it is worthy, people will uh, propose, will potentially uh, provide money to fund such an effort or resources like people or tools. So, it's progress. I don't have a timeline yet, but I'm working with Sam. Sam's helping kind of uh, move this along. So hopefully within the next month, we will have a uh, thumbs up, thumbs down on the whole moving forward and it's a thing. Any questions about the proposal? Well, speaking about the plan, since we don't have any tangible direction at this time, 
would we like to actually start working on some of the things we can do that are uh, low cost and uh, low risk if we don't get funded? Um, it's still, I think, valuable information to have around and share. Um, so I put a suggestion for three possible areas we could collaborate on. Uh, first off, we have uh, we were thinking about making two questionnaires. Uh, the first questionnaire would be to uh, kind of upstream maintainers and security teams. What do you want? What would you want out of a centralized security team? And then the second questionnaire would be more focused on downstream. What would you want out of a centralized security team? So we could potentially collaborate on a questionnaire. We could make our uh, walking around deck. At some point, if we get funded, we will need to be able to articulate to people in uh, two slides or less what the hell we're doing and what we want to, what services we want to provide. So we could work on that recruiting deck. Or we could work on uh, processes and workflow. If you look at uh, stream two, uh, 2.1, identifying core services, you'll see we have an awesome uh, diagram where we kind of mapped out some proposed uh, high level types of processes. So we could potentially start to uh, suss out what some of those things might look like. So do any of those three sound interesting or do you have an alternate proposal? Or we could just close the meeting. Randall. I have the security questionnaire we were working on before for upstream, I believe. Yeah. So, so we could, I, I like all three ideas, but I think that I have a start on that one. So yeah. Great. Well, do you have it in either delightful uh, Markdown or Google? I have it in Google Format? Docs, but I have to find it on my computer and I'm on oh. my phone. You mean on the cloud? Yeah, exactly. Because Google that is thing. in the cloud. Yep. Which is just somebody else's computer, theirs. There are lots of computers. Yep. I'll find it and I'll, uh, I'll put it in Slack. Okay. That sounds great. While Randall does this, uh, do we have anything we would like to uh, chat about? I saw the CERT got involved with the TPM bug. The Carnegie CERT Mellon CC? CERT. Yeah, CERT CC. They get involved in a lot of stuff. <laughs> do you know anything more about that art? I know it got reported to them. Um. <laughs> I know a little bit about the initial report, um, and then it was out of my out of my view at that point. Um, it was a small personal amount of personal contact to get that to a good place, which I may have had something to do with, but uh, I didn't have the details. I was just sort of making introductions. Right. Yeah, that's a doozy, though. I think it's in the spec. If I read that correctly, yeah, it's it's starting to break out today because you... it was it was yeah. all over the news this morning. Yeah, I I, I get it. I read pretty carefully but i I'm, I'm still a little bit struggling with the the spec was detailed enough that the buffer the, the memory corruption issues were in the spec i'm gonna have to read that part again but um yeah anyway it's great when we have <laughs> i don't know uh crobe knows stuff about secure boot and uefi and um interesting environment you know you have a computer in your computer and it has all the problems your computer has mm -hmm. and uh did we i don't even know if we need uefi still to this day i mean secure boot i understand the need the desire for i mean there's um, core boot but it's very different no, no, no. To... yeah which is um yada yada complexity security mm -hmm. benefits trade-offs um just an interesting messy world overall but i gotta figure out if the spec literally says the, the buffer must be this long and don't check it or something like that yeah. it might say it should be this long i hope it doesn't say don't check it I yeah I, again I, I i it's very very common the spec would have some problem but it's rarely like a you know a c implementation problem anyway whatever yeah and uh, for the record and for the record the article read 
TP, uh, TPM cannot be trusted or some. Well, you know. okay, of course, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the I was, yeah, DJ, I was reading that. Um, I'm going to read Quark, Quark's lab says, Yvonne Arce's OG vol researcher, and um, VJ at CERT wrote the CERT one, and I, I, I pretty much trust him. So uh, uh, I'll read more carefully, but yeah, curious stuff. <laughs> yeah, I uh, have had the great opportunity as part of my day job to actually oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. do uh, some work on UEFI. We did a couple podcasts with uh, the binary folks. Oh, yeah. And uh, some of our Intel folks talking about UEFI. Any luck with that survey yet, Randall? Um, not yet. Let's, Let's see. Uh, I like all three of your ideas crobe okay. um all right even even the processed one but it could be a bit early for that but yeah maybe not maybe not for some parts or you know some rough some more rough block process charts um i don't have any strong preference i'll i'll help with whatever pops up yeah i kind of tossed that one out because sometimes the uh, many of these groups dive into uh, the technology so I thought, oh, that'd be something a <laughs> technical people. person would love to dive in and start to orchestrate. But yeah, that was uh, it, it. It tickled me there, but uh, <laughs> I still might resist a bit and see. Uh, anyway, yeah, all all looks good. Um, I have no strong preference. I think the surveys are a low a low effort way of getting started because I think that can be done in. A month and i'm pretty sure we should get have feedback in a month no i agree and that's also we want to try to schedule potentially in like go talk to the kubernetes security team you know what works well for you all where would you yeah, yeah. like assistance um talk to solar designer um a lot of different uh, opportunities there to to interview people that are doing the work today and kind of absorb those best practices yeah, so I, I got that's a good it on my computer, Crow, because the app is not great. <laughs> I can't see all my files. It's crazy. Oh, first of all, I guess it helps them in the right account. I made a mistake and uh, plugged my Google Drive into my uh, photo stream. So now I'm out of Google Drive space. Oh. <laughs> because apparently I, I can't like mass delete everything. <laughs> Cloud. I, I'll have to find it on my computer, but I'll send it on Slack a little bit later for sure. Because it's what I, I it's been a while since I touched it. So would we be interested in doing some homework for the next two weeks to uh, kind of poke at that uh, survey and then come back and actually make a uh, corrections and plans on who we want to start reaching out to next yeah week. i yeah. okay i could definitely put two things together one for upstream one for downstream throw a couple of questions on there at least what i have and send it on its way okay great so that'll be our homework over the next two weeks uh, look at the document that Randall's going to share in a little bit, and we will uh, start to strategize on how we want to uh, get those rolled out. Yep. Maybe I'll ask ChatGPT what it thinks. I'm sure it thinks it's great. Well, no, and I mean, it might, it might have some boilerplate questions that we can build on. Maybe. I mean, and it's usually good for those types of things. Uh, Tomorrow, Art, I don't know if you were on the list, but tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern in the Volume Disclosure Working Group, we're going to talk OpenVex with the Dans. Uh, great. I am tracking that one. Um, I've run into the OpenVex presentation at least one other place, probably like four, which is awesome. And I, so uh, Roger that, I'll, I'm planning on being there. Yeah, I think there's great potential for collaboration on that um, and I think if we were able to figure out a solution to automatically generate those advisories like part of a, a github action or something similar yep 
yep. I think there could be a substantial amount of value to uh, you know, give that to upstream developers and then downstream could start to benefit from that analysis. Yes, um, I will say despite a wide variety of uh, ideas as to what VEX is and what it can or can't do, <laughs> Uh, I am pretty clear. I mean, you know, it's an opinion, but I'm still pretty clear on, in my mind, uh, that uh, VEX is a standard way to convey the status of some components to some mm -hmm. vulnerabilities, period. It does not tell you what your status is. You got to go figure that out. You might be able to automate that. You might not. That is not VEX's job. So nope. we, if we can at least just standardize on this thing is affected, that thing is not, this thing is, this part of this thing is, that's not a bad idea. And um, uh, I'm trying to head off a discussion about when should you issue one? The answer is anytime you're talking about the vulnerability and you're going to publish whatever, an OSV, a CVE, mm -hmm. uh, CSAF, your own personal advisory flavor, if you have a mind towards automation, Mm -hmm. Please put the please provide the status in VEX format. P P end of story. We don't need to write a paper, for instance. That's it. So, uh, sorry. Other 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 work work stream issues. Um, Open VEX can do this. Two thumbs up. Great. Uh, I'm sold. So, yep. And then, uh, depending on how this work stream goes, if we actually get funded, that's mm -hmm. something we can integrate into the certs practices. Um, we yes. had talked about the siren service mm -hmm. that potentially is a, a, a stream to provide some of that information. Absolutely. I actually was exploring this before. Um, yeah. I have some ideas later on that I'll show you guys. Cause I was exploring this like a couple weeks ago. Cool. All right. A anything else to discuss today, gents? All right. We will adjourn. Thank you for your time. Uh, the TAC call is in an hour and a half. If you want to watch bureaucracy and exciting action, uh, pop in there. Right. Thanks, Grove. Thanks, All Art. Right. Thanks, Jonathan. Cheers, Jens. Bye, everyone. See you. Yep.